Hey guys, how's it going? Hello, hello. Good to see you jumping on. Hey, Eric and Lisa, Judy, Margie. Good to see ya. Hey, hey. Well, come on in, get yourself comfortable and um, we'll get started in a few minutes here. Just going to uh, get us set up on Facebook and then um, we'll get going. So everybody had a good week? I hope so. Cool. I think we should be live. So far, so good, Judy. Nice. Oh yeah, I guess it's, it's the beginning of the week, but week since last week, I guess. It's been cold here. It's not too bad in here today, but it is getting cold here. Oh, great Mother's Day. Yes. Good. Happy Mother's Day to all our moms. Dr. Bart. Hello, Ms. Karen. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Just getting you live. I think we are um, all set. Karen, cool. this, this topic tonight is probably... <laughs> It's probably one of those topics that every single day in clinic, I talk about this stuff. So tonight, the goal is that I'm literally going to try to, this will be great for, especially if any of our, you know, I have any practitioners that are watching tonight or going to be listening to like a, you know, a recording or anything like that, or if you're a health coach or you're literally just trying to level up your own health, because I'm going to walk you through the exact process that I go through as like almost my clinician brain. Um, through every one of the itises. So whether someone's been diagnosed with one or it's just blatantly obvious to me, and we'll, we'll talk about some of those tonight, but I'm going to walk through the exact process that I use to help people kind of sift through like, what do I do? And it always, you know, it's always like leading us, like we're always trying to get to that action step. So of course we can level up. So I'm excited about today. This, is, this should make um, hopefully everything easier for everybody. Awesome. I love it. And as always, if anybody, whether you're on Facebook or, or in Zoom, if you've got any questions, um, type them in the chat. We're happy to um, answer them for sure. All right. Should we get started? Do it. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Health Made Simple show. Uh, to get started, I want to introduce our host, Dr. Bart Precourt, who has been a healthcare practitioner for over 20 years, practicing a range of modalities, including chiropractic, acupuncture, kinesiology, uh, uh, nutrition and supplementation, and functional lab testing, all out of his clinic, Balanced Health Studio in Seagrove Beach, Florida, and virtually all around the world. He's also the founder of the Health Edge program, which is a cutting edge health program for entrepreneurs and executives wanting to take their health to the next level. Uh, he works with athletes and celebrities all around the world and is going to be sharing his wisdom on the itises tonight for us. You yeah, know, that's kind of a weird word, a weird word to say the itises. It is, itises. Yeah. So what, what are we even talking about? Yeah. So th that's, that, we'll just, we'll start right there. That is any diagnosis that you've ever got that ends in an itis. So, and we'll, we'll cover them as many as we want. So, if, so it could be like bursitis, tendonitis, diverticulitis. It could be um, bronchitis. It could be uh, plantar fasciitis, all of these kind of fall into the same grouping. Um, and, I'll, and we're going to walk through that tonight. We're going to go right through a very systematic thing. That, and that way, even if whether, you know, people are watching here tonight, you know, and again, thank you everyone for coming aboard. If you're, if you're here on, you know, um, on Zoom, awesome. If you guys have questions, just write in the chats. Because if you have an itis and you want me to cover it, I will gladly do that tonight for you. Um, and then, of course, if you're on Facebook, you can do the same thing. Send your questions. We'll do our best I can to get those questions. And again, I'll, I'll do the best I can and answer. If you have an itis that you've been diagnosed with, uh, we'll do our best to answer that. And really, this came about, Karen. So the itis means any of those things are ending in I-T-I-S. And really what that means is inflammation. So it could be tendon itis. It could be uh, bursa itis. It could be a bunch of different itises. And I'll tell you the biggest reason I'm really doing this tonight Um and, and really this topic came up today. I'd like to say that I prepared this like a week ago. I didn't. Uh, when I was in clinic today, all, like, it felt like one of those days all day long 
where I just kept hearing, you know, my, my clients say, well, I've been diagnosed with blank itis. I, oh, I know, I know what it is now. And it's blank itis over and over and over again. And so I usually will then ask, well, then what were you told with that diagnosis? How do you, what's the root cause of it? How do you fix it? How do you, how do you, how do you heal up? How do you get back to being superhuman? A lot of the itises, Karen, are very uncomfortable. Mm. They're, they're not all, but most of them are acute when they start. Like they're like, there's an issue here. Like this hurts now. And things like golfer's elbow and tennis elbow, they'll fall into these itises. So a lot of them are very painful. So you're, you're often wanting to have like some level of quick fix. The challenge is if you try to quick fix the wrong way, you actually make things worse. And over and over and over again today, I saw people taking the wrong route. And the wrong route, what I mean is that they're taking a route that doesn't fix the problem. It just often, it is just band-aiding it. And then you got to go back and deal with the problem that's usually worse when you get there. Yeah, for sure. And I love that we're, we are also taking a different approach to this because also, um, as you said, a lot of people get diagnosed with this and then they just accept that diagnosis. Oh, there's, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those weird things where, you know, people will search and search and search. And I know they don't, I know no one does this intentionally. Yet oftentimes what I'll find, Karen, is that people will search, 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 and then someone gives something a label. They give it a name search is over. Yeah. I know, I know what my problem is. And I say, well, I have arthritis in my low back. That's the cause of all my low back issues is, is low back. Or I have bursitis in my hip. And that's the reason my hip has such an issue. And really this, I, I don't mean this derogatory when I say it, but in, in the holistic world or really in the functional medicine world, we consider all the itises garbage can diagnoses. <laughs> yeah. I love that you said, said that. Yeah. So I mean, why are they garbage can diagnoses? Garbage, garbage can diagnoses. It really means that it's garbage. It's a garbage diagnosis. So I'll explain, I'll explain that just a little bit. And I don't mean it in a derogatory way. It just means it means nothing. Mm -hmm. Not nothing. So it goes like this. Let's take, let's take arthritis, which is definitely one of the ones I want to cover tonight. Yeah. And arthritis is definitely one where people say you're just going to have that forever. Always. And, and, and then the root cause is often considered just your genes. Yes. So uh, I'll, we'll go into arthritis in just a moment, but I, but I want to explain the, diag the, the garbage can oh, diagnosis yeah. comment. Uh, what, I, what I mean by that is this, that you get these diagnoses that you go into the doctor and you say, doc, my joint hurts. It hurts right here. And then the doctor, whatever. I mean, and it sounds like I'm beating the, the profession up. I'm not. I'm just saying this is just how it, it goes. They check your elbow out. It's not broken. There's no broken bones. There's no cuts or wounds. And they say, well, you know what, Karen, you're 58 years old, whatever. I know you're not 58. Uh, and you <laughs> got some arthritis in your elbow. And then you walk out of them and be like, ah, that's why my elbow hurts so much. I got arthritis. Yeah. Think about it. So arth you said you had elbow pain and the doctor tells you in a Latin term. So most diagnoses, most descriptions of the body are used from, from Latin. So arth means A-R-T-H means joint and itis means inflammation. So the doctor just takes your words, turns them into Latin words and gives them back to you and says, you got arthritis, you have inflammation in your elbow. Yeah. And we do this over and over and over again. And that's why I'm call I call them garbage can, you know, diagnoses where they don't really tell us much. In fact, usually the patient is already coming in with the diagnosis, but they're just using the real life stuff. Like my shoulder hurts. It hurts in between my joints. And that's, you know, might be the bursa or something like that. So that's really what I mean by the, the garbage can diagnosis and that oftentimes there's never that search for like, what is the root cause here? And that's, and I think everyone that, you know, that's, you know, here tonight with us, you're, you're searching, you're looking for that, you know, how do you continue your journey to get healthier? How do you continue to level yourself up to become the best version of you that you possibly can? I know that's my journey. That's your journey. So that's, uh, we're going to go into getting some root cause stuff here tonight. Yeah, love it. Uh, I think uh, the more we can always look for the root cause, right? And and if you are getting a diagnosis like this, keep keep searching because painkillers aren't your only solution. Yeah, painkillers, anti-inflammatories, steroids, that kind of stuff. And that's those are the ones that are used over and over again. And I know they seem so innocent, Karen, but they're not. Yeah. You know, you pay the piper. Like, I'll just give an example. When someone when we take a steroid right now. 
a steroid it is, is essentially like dumping in massive amounts of, of cortisol, which is your stress hormones. They put your body in a state of fight or flight and sympathetic dominance and it blocks out inflammation. I get it. Like it down regulates inflammation. Yet at the same time, shuts off your immune system. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like, it, it, it's not, it's not as forgiving as we think it is, but there usually there's not a direct correlation one-to-one. So we've got to be real mindful. And that's, and that's my, my goal tonight is that we'll sift through some of these and hopefully someone out there, whether you're on Facebook tonight or here on zoom is able to go, ah, got it. I've been diagnosed with that itis before, and this is now what I'm going to do. Cause I'm going to break it down as simple as I can, Karen. I'm going to try to let people inside my head to kind of kind of see how I navigate things clinically. Um, so I'll, I'll do the best that I can here. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, we've got a couple of people posting in their, their itises. So, I mean, we mentioned arthritis and um, we've got someone here who has major arthritis in the shoulder. Only fix has been told is a total shoulder replacement, which I'll never do. So let's okay. start with arthritis. Well, let's do this. I want to give my, my, so this is how we're going to approach this with all the itises. There's really a four step, like four questions that we're going to ask. Okay. Address each one of these. And this is going to help us find how to, how to improve the human body to handle the itis. So again, I'm not treating any diseases tonight. I'm not treating arthritis, I'm not treating tendonitis, fasciitis, bronchitis, meningitis, yet I'm going to give us pathways and, you know, and strategies to help improve human function. And that human function is what takes care of those things. So it goes like this, Karen. So number one, if we have any kind of itis, the very first thing that we're, there's really no, there's four things and there's no order here, but they all have to be addressed. Okay. Number one is your diet. 100%. If you have foods that provoke inflammation, it's like feeding the fire. So the first thing we want to do is just address, is there a way to change the diet to improve the inflammatory status? And if I was going to put someone on an anti-inflammatory diet without getting to the, the massive details, I'll just go to the, the, the simple ones couple of things. Sugar's got to go, reduce the carbohydrates, gluten yeah. goes, dairy goes. That's kind of like the top. So those things are absolutely positively. And I tell you what, I will tell you firsthand, my wife will tell you the same thing. It doesn't take much to get sidetracked with your diet to feel your aches and pains more. I, the first time I used to have a lot of back pain and I, yoga really helps actually, but I also went to lots of practitioners, took painkillers, whatever, and then did an elimination diet, but like pretty strict for like three months. And I was like, oh, wow. Like never made the click on how much I don't even, I was, I thought I was eating pretty clean, but not, it wasn't, there was foods that were really inflaming my back pain. And I just, I didn't realize until I took them out. Yeah, all the time. And that's one of my favorite things to when people have that aha moment yeah. and we recognize that we have so much control over the pain in our body. So listen, oh, crazy. I, I put a beating on my body, no secret there. And normally I walk around and say this much pain. Okay. Yeah. My bad diet, I have this much pain. Yeah. In that bad diet could just be too many carbohydrates, too much sugar, a little bit of gluten here and there. And it just blows the system up. Most inflammatory process, it's not just that they create inflammation, Karen. Here's the, here's, the, here's the bigger challenge, and we'll get into this with arthritis. When we blow, when we have the inflammation, it also blocks nutrients getting to the very joints that need it the most. Mm -hmm. So wherever that inflammation is, once there's inflammation, there's damaged tissue, there's damaged glands, there's gland damaged organs there. Now, because of the inflammation, it's like a wall. You can't get the nutrients into that area. So with that being said, let's, let's dive into arthritis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So food. Food. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll, we'll, just, we'll break the word down. Arth, which I know I already did, means joint. Itis means inflammation of the joint. So we have a, a, a you know, a, oh, I, I didn't go through my four steps, did I? I guess I no. should. So we, so we do the four steps for all of them first, and then we'll go into the specific ones for arthritis. All right. So number one, we got to check out food. Number two, okay. we gotta either improve or eliminate movements. So we, we, we got to add movement or we got to take away movement. So it goes food, movement. Number three is sleep. Every itis out there, Karen, improves with sleep. Every single one of them. 
Yeah. It's you pretty- know what? Everything improves the sleep really, doesn't it? Any healing process. And I say that and it's so obvious, but I, I would go to bet right now that everyone out there, even everyone who's going to ask about their itis is here tonight. If I said, when you got your diagnosis, did they tell you to become a better sleeper? The answer is no. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Because the difference here is, and that's really the difference between practicing sick care and health care. You know, and, and we, we talk about that often here is that there, there's a big difference between not being sick or not being in pain versus really thriving. So number three is sleep and number four is supplement. So it goes food, then it goes movement, then it goes into sleep. And then the fourth is the supplements, vitamins, nutrients, and or um, um, herbs. herbs. Yeah, herbs. So that those four things, if we break that down, no matter what our itis is, that's going to be our fastest way to navigate back to health. All right, now we can start. <laughs> with arthritis? Yeah, we'll start with arthritis. So we'll go yeah. right. First, first thing is food. What do we do? No doubt about it. Arthritis is probably the number one food. Like it's number one issue is food. Mm. It's, it's food and movement here. And I'll explain both. The food is this. If you have poor foods, you're gluten, if you're always staying inflamed, whatever is being used the most in your body will wear down the fastest and be in the greatest nutrient deficiency. This is so important for us to understand because I think someone said just some, something about a shoulder. Yeah. Whatever moves the most will become the deficient the fastest. So if you're a baseball pitcher and you're throwing the ball all the time and you don't have good nutrition and because of the movement, the constant movement, you inflame it, now you can get less nutrients in. And if you already didn't have a good diet, you've got two strikes against you. And now it starts to wear. The more you use it, it starts to degenerate. So it really starts to break down more and more. Runners, you don't have a good diet. Why don't you have a good diet? Because you're always running. You figure you just eat off your pizza. You eat off your French fries. That's not a, that, you know, I've been hearing and seeing it for years. I've probably been guilty of it for for years. And what happened, my runners typically do not have good diets. My other athletes do, but my runners do not. And it's because they're always running, burning up those calories. So what, what wears down on a run of the fastest? We always say, well, obviously it's their knees and their hips. And we blame it on the running. But the truth is you were able to run in the beginning. It is the deficiency over time that causes the wearing down of those joints. So you could have arthritis or osteoarthritis, which is another garbage can diagnosis, which really just means osteo means bone, bone joint inflammation. So now where the bones come together, it's, that's what osteoarthritis is. Tells us now that the, the, the bone itself is becoming a little degenerated, it's breaking down. And again, that by itself starts with a nutrition deficiency. So we take arthritis and then the second part of that is how you're moving it. Mm. So here's, here's the key here. So movement could be, we have to inhibit the movement. We might be doing too much of this random, you might, you know, it just might not be that good for the body. And after you've done it 500, 650,000 times, it might be starting to wear it down. The other challenge there is the often overlooked and forgotten part is that we all know that the human body is absolutely incredible. It is a healing machine. It was made in perfection. It, it, it works in perfection. It never lies to us. Yet there's this fundamental thing that we have to have good mechanics. And yeah. spinal mechanics, AKA good posture, are the very first step. So when I see most people, I, I don't see very many people with good posture. That's reality. We all sit so, so much, right? We sit at our desks, we sit at computers. So just the act of what you and I are doing right now, and most of our listeners are doing, probably sitting down. We're slunged forward a little bit and we're using our arms and our shoulders. And it's not even what we're doing now, but when we get up out of our chairs and we go out into the real world, then what are we doing with our body parts as they're kind of stuck in these postures? So this is, this is what becomes key is the critical part is when it comes to arthritis is getting proper movement in your body. So here, listen close. If you guys, anyone out there has arthritis, I'm going to walk you down how you help your body significantly with your arthritis. One, you clean up your diet significantly. Two, you start getting better posture. You start to do, you work on your core, you get some yoga in your life, go get your chiropractic adjustments. Huge here, absolutely huge. Go get your massages, get the faster to release in your body. Then if you do that, one of the best things for you is exercise. If you don't do those other things, 
if you haven't cleaned up your diet, if you haven't started to move better, if you haven't, you know, got better alignment and better posture, and you exercise on top of that, you probably make it worse. And so that's a scenario where is exercise good or bad for us? And typically with people that have arthritis, say you got to move. We've got to get some blood flow going. We got to get those tissues, you know, vibrant again. We may not take the pounding, but nonetheless, we want to get the body moving to get the blood flow going. And then number four, of course, is supplements. So first thing we're going to ask when it comes to supplements and feeding the tissue gland organ or system of the body is, is there a type of supplement specific to what the damaged part? Okay. So in this scenario, let's just say that the joint is damaged, or we'll say that really the bone is damaged. So the company that I use, and I often talk about it here on our show, is a company called Standard Process. And they make very unique to them, the only ones in the world that do it, they make what's called protomorphogens. And that is when there's been damage to a tissue organ gland. They use a very specific supplement to help heal that gland. It's really not even heal, it's helping to make better cells on top of it. And those are called protomorphogens. So for bone, there's something called astrophin PMG, PMG. So that's my number one. So if I know someone has arthritis, I'd love them to be on something called Ostrophin PMG. They take two before they go to bed in an empty stomach and they stay on it for about 60 days. So that's, that's kind of like the starting point. One, you're going to hear me repeat over and over again in terms of supplements. So now we want to think when it comes to the bone of the joint, right? Is there a vitamin or a mineral that's really specific to them? Of course, trace minerals are really important. Those are always really good. The number one, Herb though, turmeric all day long. Oh, uh, yeah. So turmeric, astrophin PMG, and typically with this, I'll actually use something called uh, glucosamine synergy. It's a very unique type of glucosamine product. It's not glucosamine by itself because that doesn't have enough nutrients with it, but it's glucosamine with all of the other type of vitamins, minerals, and herbs that need to actually refeed that joint. And then there's one other that I really love to use with this. And it's so simple. It's called calcifood wafers. I probably put this, this is probably my first one with typical arthritis. And the reason being, Karen, this is a 100% veal bone extract. So it's made from veal bones and it has all 22 amino acids in it. It is as pure as it gets as far as a protein and an amino acid. And it's highly absorbable, highly bioavailable with calcium to the body. So super, super good for the arthritis cases. Yeah, we want to go right down that list anti-inflammatory diet. We got to move better, probably stop the repetitive action that could be beating up that joint. Might, might need to take a pause on running for a little bit. Or if you're a baseball pitcher, you might have to pause on that. We got to make sure we get better alignment, get the body moving properly, better posture. We want to make sure we get ample amounts of sleep because you only heal when you sleep. So that has to happen. And then that protocol I just gave you. So when it comes to sleep, we've got... Um this person we're talking about is gets um, eight hours of sleep per night, but little to no deep sleep, zero to 30 minutes. Well, as we age deep sleep, and I'm guessing that she is, she is monitoring it. And I love it. I monitor mine all the time. If you're monitoring it and you're not getting any deep and you're doing some other really good habits, you're not having alcohol at night, you're not having sugar, cause that'll disrupt both of those, but you get a nice eight hours. Good for you. That's awesome. There are very specific strategies and, and different types of herbs that I'll toy with to use to get that deep sleep. Those are usually, so I'm assuming for this person who's, who's asking this, your diet's pretty clean. You have a lower inflammatory, lower carb, lower, lower sugar thing um, diet. And then I'll incorporate some very specific herbs built for stamina um, and really, really good adaptogen herbs. Deep sleep is something that we lose as we age. And it's critical because that is the repair of the body. Um, I have worked relentlessly on mine relentlessly because and so how much deep sleep now like what how much deep sleep are you meant to get to, per night well it'd be great if you get better than an hour an hour and a half it's usually about a, yeah. it's about a percentage you'd like to be somewhere between 18 and 25 percent of your sleep okay. of deep sleep okay. most people that i see that entrepreneurs karen are getting probably zero to 30 minutes um yeah okay. i used to do that um now i can like you know like tap myself in the back i get a, over an hour a night which is for my age group is it's almost double, double and a half. So real quickly, if that person's still listening here, I use very, some, some very specific herbs. I always use adaptogen herbs and I'm always supporting my adrenal glands. 
that's really what it comes down to. So things like echinacea, things like rhodiola ginseng, phenomenal. Um, and, th- th- and again, they could always reach out and I'll be happy to walk them through the path of like how to improve deep sleep. Deep sleep is critical for longevity of your physical body, hands down, no doubt about it. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. So, um, and sorry, what was that gl- glucosamine supplement? Was that glucosamine synergy? Glucosamine synergy. Yeah, okay, cool. Six, I'll just grab the link. Aaron, I'll if- tuck that in the, gr- in the chat for you guys as well. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, and, if, and if people, I know we're going to blow through these pretty fast or whatever, if they want, they can just throw the questions and I'll put the dosing if I forget them. But six of those a day. Um, I think I told you that the astrophen PMG, just take two before, not, before you go to bed on an empty stomach. That's ideal. And you do that for about 60 days. And that's all you need of that. And that kind of gets that, that tissue organ or gland to fire back up. And then the calcium food, um, I'll use two wafers twice a day. They come in these little chewy wafers. They're yummy. So there's four, four of those a day. And then the turmeric, uh, two twice a day as well. Okay. Casa food. Cool. All right. I'll add that one um, in. That one's the calcium food wafers. Yeah, I got it. All right, cool. I'll add that in there for you guys too, so that you can grab that. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Kim, I've just put the link in there. These are the wafers, the calcium food. And I'll put the link in Facebook too, if you guys want to grab that one. Um, okay, cool. So that is arthritis. Should we talk about a couple of the other ones? I've got another couple of uh, people with some artists here. Dive in. Okay. What about um, period, peri, periodontitis? Two saw- one. How do I say that? Periodontitis. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm guessing it's a um, uh, some kind of dental, a, a gum. It's an inflammation. Yeah, the gum. All right, so let's go right to the top. Let's 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 get let's get in the habit of this. So number one, can we change up our diet? The answer is absolutely. Yes, we got to make sure your gut microbiome. Most periodontal type issues are your gut bleeding. Not bleeding back up is the wrong word. But that's what we we call it. The the bacteria coming back up in the gut, it changes the pH in the mouth and it becomes super, super vulnerable for infections like bacterial infections, et cetera. So you got to make sure that we're we're really like talking about things like candida and yeast overgrowth, that kind of stuff. So one, can we change up the diet? Yes. In these scenarios, I also like to use intermittent fasting, you know, not not super long, but we got to start having a timeout um, and we got to help start to reacidify the mouth and the gut. Apple cider vinegar would be like one of the things I would add, but I would take away all of those other things. So that's, that's one of the places that I would start. Um, then next, we're going to talk about movement. Is there anything we can do for movement here? Not really, other than we'll call the movement now. We got to have really good, you know, um, you know, brushing. We're brushing our teeth, obviously, flossing. And not, but we got to be mindful, too. You know, we got to like do it in ways that's not thrashing our gums. Um, and then we're going to, of course, go to sleep. Again, we heal when we sleep. We're going to say super hydrated. As much as this person can possibly drink water, the better. You want things flushing and flowing, flushing and flowing. And then we're going to go to supplements. And this, this is going to be, this is going to kind of take some people by surprise. So I don't necessarily have a, a gum supplement if that's, if that's really what they're, if that, what the issue yeah. is here. Um, but I'm going to give them a digestive enzyme. I'm going to two different types. Okay. I use is something called Zypan. It's an acidifier. And we're going to do that. So we, we really are going to acidify the body. I know it sounds odd to people always thinking, oh, we got to, you know, raise the pH. We got to get, you know, get more of an alkaline system. In this scenario, you need to get, you got to acidify. You'll see in a lot of the others that we talk, when we talk about bursitis and stuff like that, and we need to acidify all of those. Um, so in this scenario, Zypan, two before all meals, and that's literally going to add some increased uh, hydrochloric acid, make you a better digester. You know, like literally so you can digest and improve, especially in your upper GI system. And I use another one, Karen. I think we've talked about it here. It's really, it's another type of uh, digestive enzyme, but it works a little bit different. It's a bitter enzyme. Um, just like, you know, in the spring season right now where we are for all of us, it's a really good idea to eat as many bitter foods as possible. So this is really good. It's called Digest Forte. Um, just two a day and you can take that at any time. It's, it's, it's a little better if you take it before food, but you don't have to because it will wake up the, the, re- the receptors in the body, the digestive enzymes are really the bitter receptors. So again, and then 
you, you, you could never go wrong using turmeric. It wouldn't come to, because it's going to help the body facilitate anything inflammatory, but most likely, and listen, one of the reasons that we have so much knowledge about nutrition in this world is because of the old school dentists, literally like um, the guy who, who was the kind of the founder of standard process, his background, he was a dentist. Really? Wow. Destin A. Price, dentist. And the reason is they were able to look at people like they didn't have technology and x-rays and you know endo endoscopies and all this stuff they looked in a person's mouth and they and they were oh wait a minute your mouth is a mess and you have disease and they saw this that's when that's when you know the the dentists were really a part of the entire medical system helping people get healthy because they would say well stop eating this and let's put you over on here we saw that the tooth got better when the teeth get better the bones get better the gums get better. The soft tissue of the body gets better. The gums get better. The gut lining gets better. It's that same thing. So all of those things are really, really good. So anything to improve the health of, of the body, I'm sorry, of the gut would be really smart here. And one small, one kind of sideways one that you're not going to hear much of, I'll, I'll use a lot with soft tissue. It's called Gota Cola. Gota Cola is just absolutely fantastic for all, all connective tissue. And that's what we're going to kind of think of there because it's holding those teeth in there the best that they can. Um, that's a slow and go with that one. And then anytime, quite frankly, you increase the amount of vitamin C, but the full complex, what we call cataplex C. So I know I'm kind of rambling there, but stomach, 100%. So we can clean up the diet, acidify, inter intermittent fasting a little bit. Keep the keep super hydrated. We're always gonna flush things out. We're getting any bacteria out of the body the best you can. Tongue scraping, very important here. We want to get that extra bacteria, extra fungus off the tongue. A little apple cider vinegar is good as well. Okay, awesome. Uh, and I'll just chuck catapult C in the chat as well. Um, okay, awesome. Uh, should we do some more here? We've got. Um, been diagnosed with bursitis, tendonitis, oh, and tinnitus. Is that an is that a related yeah. thing? Tinnitus, tinnitus, and you could say tinnitus. tinnitus. Yeah. Let's let's do the bursitis and and tendonitis because some of the protocols can be the same. Let's just yeah. describe it first. So ten, tendonitis is a description of the tendon being inflamed. So and the tendon is so tendons attached. So you got muscle, tendon, bone, the, the tendon attaches to the bone. So if you guys like in your wrist, these little, like those guys right there, they're tendons that attach to the bone. So again, we're going to start with diet. Can our diet affect this? Eck yes. Tendons, especially as we age, they're like the last guy in the game. They get fed last. They're the hardest to get fed. So it is as we age, oftentimes our muscles can stay really, really like pliable and strong and everything, but it's our tendons that you know get the inflammatory stuff going on that makes us feel a little bit older so we've got to do a better job with our diet what does that mean we're going to get the sugar out we're going to get the gluten out we're going to get the dairy out and listen for in karen i think you talked about elimination diet if you've got you know you can go, always go to the next level get all the nightshades out get the lectins out but at least start with no dairy no gluten no sugar reduce your carbohydrates that's that's a no-brainer so let's move then we're going to move into the idea of movement this is important one. So most likely, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that this person has tendonitis and bursitis, like in the same area, maybe the elbow and the wrist or whatever it may be. So if there's a repetitive micro trauma taking place, we have to inhibit. You and I were talking about this before the call. Yeah, we were because I had tendonitis all down my, my wrist and my arm from using a mouse, from sitting at a desk, using a mouse all day. And, um, you know, I'd go to physios and people would be like, get a new mouse and try this mouse. And it just, it got really, it would, it would, the pain would go all the way up my neck and it got, it got really unbearable. Uh, so in the end, I just decided, oh, I'm going to switch and do everything with my left hand. I almost got forced to because my right was so sore. Uh, but for some reason, I don't get it in my left. So it took me about three months to learn how to use my mouse and my keyboard with my left hand. You, you know, you're so used to using your right. But once I was able to get myself learning, now I, I, yeah, I managed to eliminate the pain through changing over to doing all those actions in my left hand. And I don't get the same tendonitis at all. 
Yeah. So the, that mouse thing's real. Like I see it all the time. There's like, there'll be, you know, then is it a carpal tunnel? Is it, you know, and literally I'll get in there. So, so here's, here's how we do this food. You got to clean it up second. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm imagining it's what you have. Okay. A tendonitis, whatever those tendons are now they're pissed off and they get tight. That's what'll happen. They get really, really tight. So if you get in there, massage there, you don't want to dig at them. All you want to do is compress and release, compress and release, compress and release. That's how you get blood flow back to a tendon. So just squeeze and release, squeeze and release. So this could be a home therapy. It could be the same thing. It could be around your knees where the tendons go into the knees. It could be around your elbows. And that's why even Karen, sometimes you'll see people wear like, they'll say they have tennis elbow and they'll wear those like single bands real yeah. quick. They're helpful because they support the tendon from taking on, on, on those forces. So sometimes you got to remove the micro trauma. And then of course we got to go, all right, let's, are we sleeping enough? And in these scenarios, that micro trauma, the sleep also means time out like time out for those tendons. Yeah. The biggest challenge people have at the desk with the mouse, and I see it all the time, the whole posture, the mechanics, right? Because we're going back to posture. Right shoulder goes forward, right pelvis is forward, hips down. And this is our posture. Yeah. And then the wrist is at this kind of funky angle, always. It's like this. And that's why those things, always those tendons become inflamed. And that's the itis, those tendonitis. The bursitis, a little bit different. Same premise here though. So bursitis, so... In between um, every joint, the, where the two bones come together, you have this like fluid-like sac. And if the joint is supposed to line up perfectly, awesome. If it lines up crooked, it'll kind of kink and push on that bursa and it'll inflame it. And then you have bursitis. And we'll see, you, can, you technically can see it in any joint, but you'll often see it in the shoulder, in the elbow, in the fingers, in, in the hip. And once that gets inflamed, there's not like it's a timeout period, but we don't do that. We keep grinding through it. I'll see my baseball players keep grinding through it. I see my people that my ladies who cross their leg and then go out and play tennis. They have the poor, poor posture. And then they go out and play an aggressive sport like tennis where they got to use their hips a lot. And then they get a bursitis and this man, every time I do this, it hurts. And they literally, and then they keep doing it. I'm like, man, every time I do this, it keeps hurting. Yeah. We're gonna, we'll break it down in reverse here because there's a little two different things. If this person has bursitis and they have tendonitis, I know right away we got to get your diet cleaner. So the bursitis, I'll speak to that first. This is an acidity issue. This is your you have you need to out you need to acidify the body big time. You have an imbalance between your phosphorus. So if you have bursitis, this is very specific for you. You have a you have an imbalance between calcium and phosphorus. Some of the other ways, and again, back to the dentist thing. This is crazy. You'll have calcium buildup on the teeth. And if you see that, they're, man, they're, they're, they're a bursitis waiting to happen. And that calcium is that when you have calcium deposits built up on your teeth, that is a calcium phosphorus imbalance. So really what we're going to do, I use something called phospho food, phos food liquid. You can do 30 drops a day in your water. It's really easy to take. And we're going to start to balance out that calcium phosphorus issue because that calcium can also deposit in the joints and kind of build up in there. So I'm going on a little tangent here on, on bursitis, but this is how we heal it up. We want to acidify the body. So we get it, we clean the diet up, right? So that's number one. We're going to make sure that we get, you know, the sugar out, the carbohydrates out. Intermittent fasting is going to help you. That's going to help acidify. So we downregulate any of the bad bacteria that's happening in the gut here. So we're going to get all the crap out and then we're going to start to put the good guys in cruciferous vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, cruciferous vegetables. We want foods that are super high in potassium um, to help balance out this phosphorus and calcium issue here. So as much as you can do that, you do that. And then we're going to move into sleep. Of course, there's a good chance. I think this person said they had tendonitis, bursitis, and tinnitus. Tinnitus is totally different here, except that it's related to the diet. But the tendonitis and the bursitis, when it comes to the supplements, they both benefit from turmeric. Absolutely. That'll be your go-to herb for this. The tendonitis, there's a, my key product here. It's awesome. It's called Ligaplex 2. This is awesome. This Ligaplex 2 is for anything, tendon, muscle, or ligament. So super, super good. And what's, what makes it so good, Karen, you gotta, we got to take six a day. They come in little capsules. It's whole food, of course. It, it's easy to digest. You can take it with or without food. It's a brilliant product where it literally has, all, it's a whole food multivitamin 
built into this tendon muscle, tendon muscle and ligament products that really help support the, re, the rejuvenation of those. If you are having a tendon issue and it's nonstop, you could, you could add something like go to call. It's not necessarily my first go-to unless that's like your Achilles tendon. And then I use go to call always. And if it's a weight bearing tendon like that. So for the bursitis, phospho food, uh, fast food liquid 30, uh, 30 a day. And then, um, Turmeric will be for both of those. Ligaplex 2 for tendonitis. So if you did Ligaplex 2, turmeric, man, and I go for both of these old school cod liver oil. That, because old school, the, the fish oils, I probably should be saying, I could put this in every protocol with an itis. Every protocol with an itis could have a, could have a fish oil because again, that's going to help facilitate the inflammatory process. When I say that, Karen, if you damage a joint, it gets inflamed. That inflammation sends very specific immune cells up into the brain says, Hey, we need more nutrients. We have damaged tissue. Now we need transporters to get things in and out. That's what your fatty acids do. And if you don't have them, you don't transport in and out. So fish oils are not anti-inflammatories. They're transfer. They're like they're, they're like buses. They get stuff out for us. So they have that anti-inflammatory effect. Okay, awesome. Um, <clears throat> just a good question here. When you were talking about calcium buildup, is that the same on your teeth? Is that the same as plaque? Similar process. It, it's similar, but it's not necessarily the same as plaque. So plaque, when we think about plaque in the arteries, is a little bit different. That is usually comes from a cholesterol buildup that is then things are literally sticking to that lipid. So calcium can build up in there as well, but it's a little bit different um, in the mechanisms that we go about this. So um, that one does not mean this, the other, but typically if you see someone with a lot of calcium buildup in their mouth, they've got a diet that's off. That also means everywhere else in the body that it, that can be a calcium buildup, a little bit different than the cholesterol buildup that people are talking about. But when you hear people talk about calcium building up in the arteries, that it's dangerous. It is like, we don't want that either. Yeah. No. Um, okay, so what about tinnitus? So that's a little bit different. Mm. Tinnitus. So the tinea, which is inside the ear here, uh, that's an inflammatory process of that. Now, tinnitus can be a bunch of things, anything from, you know, like um, ringing in the ears. That's mm. another way for saying that. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. So th this usually goes about a couple of ways. One, clean up the diet right away. Blown away how carbohydrates affect the ears. Wow. I'll say that again. Carbohydrates affect the ears. The more carbohydrates we eat, the more sugar we have, um, you get more earwax. And then we get more bacteria. We get more things building up. It's kind of crazy. But yeah. people who are fasting, people who are doing uh, ketogenic diets are recognized, man, I don't have as much earwax when I get my body really clean. <laughs> um, so it's pretty cool. So of course, we go to the diet first. We're going to clean it up. Uh, movements, probably not too many different things you can do. I'm not a huge fan of sticking Q-tips deep down in your ear, cleaning them out. And we got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, so not too much you can do with movement. Sleep, always effective. Um, so that's always a healing process. And then when it comes to nutrition, a couple things. This, well, I tell you, I'm going to go back to movement real quick here. Oftentimes, you need an adjustment. Uh, okay. That tinnitus is because of misalignment at C1. So, and I literally, if I if tinnitus comes in my office, first thing I do is, all right, let's get this checked out. If you have a misalignment here, that's where we start. And that any chiropractor will be 100% familiar with that. And it's a, a very easy adjustment to provide. And usually, usually you'll notice some results pretty quick, but it's usually also multifaceted. That individual typically, is also an adrenal case. Mm, okay. It's kind of a random disconnection here, but I'll also see with tinnitus with people who have adrenals that are just fatigued. You're stuck in sympathetic dominance, and this is where sleep becomes imperative for you. Yes. If this is in the individual and they have multiple itises, I know they're worn down. They're beat down, worn down. And, you know, I feel for it because, you know, I've kind of been there before, like you're pushing and grinding and you're like, you know, exercise is good for you, but the more you do it, the more it hurts, you know, and you're like, and because your body's falling apart, you're like, man, this is like, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a rough road. But I'll tell you, if you do all of these little things, 
and I know it seems like a lot, but you know, you clean up the diet pretty good. You become a better sleeper. You you know, dedicate that time. You make sure like this isn't a scenario for this individual. Their body pain changes your posture as well. They need an yeah. adjustment, no doubt about it. Um, and yeah. then incorporate some of those different supplements, and they'll get results. Like I promise you, like if that person did what I just told you to do in 30 days, I'm not talking about magic wand, everything better, but definitely light, like light at the end of the tunnel. Like this is going to improve their lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, awesome. What about, uh, we've got another question here. What about rheumatoid arthritis? Is that different? How does that fit into joint inflammation? It is a little bit different. So rheumatoid arthritis kind of falls into the category, Karen, of an, uh, an autoimmune condition. Mm -hmm. It's bloodborne. Yeah, let's just go. Let's just bring the itis right through our thing here. Okay, let's go through diet first. Can we make? Can we take better foods for an autoimmune condition? Yeah, you got to get clean. You got to heal leaky gut. L listen, if you have an autoimmune condition, you had some version of a leaky gut somewhere along the way. So if you've never addressed that, that's where you're going to start it. Then we go into can we move a little bit better? Yes. And what I'm going to say to that is this, that you definitely want to improve your posture. It's not those joints that have the rheumatoid. They're not the ones that have to necessarily be better aligned. It's the body. We've got yeah. to bring ease to the body. I love things like infrared sauna for people that have been for, you know, for a rheumatoid makes their body feel a little bit better. Where in a lot of times in these itises, we're trying to use ice and stuff like that, but often the increased circulation is very beneficial. Sleep, no doubt about it. It's not, this is an autoimmune condition. It's blood borne. Um, so we got to clean up the body because you got to clean up the blood, which, you know, at the end of the day, we got to clean, we got to get the body clean supplement wise. Yes. We have a very specific type of, like I'll use very specific things for rheumatoid. There's one called Ostroplex, which is, so I could go to that bone. Uh, usually what I do is something called Ostroplex. Um, and that's a combination of for the bone because in rheumatoid arthritis, the bones do get beat up. Like you might see for people that aren't familiar with that are watching, that's when sometimes you'll see the knuckles and they kind of like, they, they get swollen and then they start to kind of like twist. Yeah, and go the other way. My, yeah. yeah. It can be very painful. And the yeah. goal is that you catch it early. We start making these changes right away and downregulate that inflammatory process. It's a really good example in rheumatoid that um, when we have rheumatoid, that it eats up the joints real fast because they can't get the, the nutrients in there. In this scenario, my best advice, I'm going to keep giving you a couple of things. Turmeric, absolutely clean up the gut, no doubt about it. This is the smarter play here would be to reach out someone like myself, reach out to another practitioner. They're able to see your entire picture because typically if you have one type of autoimmune condition, there's usually another one or two that are dealing with this. And the first thing that comes to my mind is Hashimoto's. Um, I don't know if it was a male or female that, that sent this in, but that's, those are the things we really want to look at. And the beauty is, you know, you can do a lot of things and I know they say they're autoimmune. And, and I know that, that oftentimes when people say, oh, they're autoimmune, there's nothing you can do about it. There's a ton. There's an absolute ton you can do about it. And if just the idea or the hope that you can live your life more comfortable is enough to drive you awesome, because you can, you can definitely be more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, that's awesome. Um, We've got another question here. What about a knee that feels like it may buckle on the stairs? It hasn't buckled yet. Uh, I'm trying to prevent a, prob a bigger problem. So that, that's an instability. So that means it's not firing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that means it's not firing. So when the body, this, this is a great question. It kind of doesn't fit in here, but it's a great question. Uh, when the body has when there's something that's not good for the body, like you have a damaged tissue, you have a joint that's not working good and the body recognizes. remember the body's brilliant. It's made within, you know, an in brilliance and it always, always operates brilliantly. We don't like the way it operates always, but it is always operating brilliantly. When it buckles like that, that is your body taking away your power. So you can't cause more damage wow. because it's no different. Like if you hurt your shoulder, you don't have power. Your body's like, I'm not a fool. I'm not going to give you power. You'll keep using your shoulder. Yeah. So that instability fear tells me it's not firing properly. That means there needs to be some improvement to the system. So if they're in my office, like there's some old school kinesiology techniques that can literally get it to fire in two seconds. And I mean that, like we do a muscle test. It's not firing. You can tell it's unstable. We fire it back up and then we go, then we try to fix the rest of the system. 
like before I'll adjust someone, I might do this, just an old, some old kinesiology techniques. So if that person's either local, awesome, come on down, let me know. Um, we'll get it fired up and then we'll figure out now what's going on here. Could it be a meniscus issue? It could be, but most likely it's not firing properly. Most of the time that's coming from the joints above or below, meaning you got an ankle foot issue or you got a hip issue. Most of the time it's a hip low back issue from sitting, et cetera. Weight distribution, right? Muscles pulling differently, not accurately. They're out of alignment, out of you know bad posture type stuff. And then you get that instability. So um, again, that's your body talking to you. So listen and go find a practitioner and they would know if this is what words is if someone called and said, does your doctor know how to help me get my legs to refire or my extremities or do muscle testing? And I'd be like, yes, I do. Other doctors that do that same work will know exactly what they're talking about and basically invite you on in. If they are like, we have no idea what you're talking about. It's okay. They're just not going to be able to help it out. Okay, cool. Yeah. This person isn't local. So maybe that's something that she can do. Cool. You're going to look around. for a, a, a a practitioner that does muscle testing in kinesiology. Okay. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Um, these supplements that we've been talking about, can you take them all together for all the ones you talked about for arthritis? Can you take all the supplements together? Um, she's saying she had a look and some of them have different amounts of the same stuff. Yeah. Some, some do overlap a little bit, but their formulas are so incredibly brilliant and so incredibly important. The nice thing is Karen is any of the ones I'm recommending today, they're whole food. So yeah. there's, there's not going to be an issue with poor stimulation or anything like that. Remember vitamins and minerals do not push the body to do anything beyond its normal capacity. They just supply the nutrients so the body can do what, whatever it's, you know, current potential is herbs can help increase that process. And that's why we want to have a combination of vitamins and minerals and herbs, because we're usually lagging behind. You don't have to take the herbs, but you might just take a really, really long time to get where you want to go. So yeah. that's why we supplement and we use vitamins and minerals, and then we use the herbs as well. But yeah, if there's, there's definitely some overlap. Like if I use Legaplex 2 and Glucosamine Synergy, there's a decent amount of overlap because they're both working with the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments. So of course there's going to be an overlap there. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, we've got another question here. Would you suggest to do a cleanse before starting any of the supplements for any of these itis diagnosis? You know, I think a cleanse is always my clinical goal. It really is. And especially the cleanse that we do, because I know when you're done that cleanse, you'll be a better functioning human being. Yet I don't, you don't need to. If you just stuck to, when we talk about the diet, if you reduce the sugar, sugar will feed inflammation, it feeds fire, which really means, I mean, you know, it's like adding, it's literally adding gas to the inflammation or gas to the fire, which really means that we want to do our best to reduce the overall carbohydrate intake because all carbohydrates convert to sugar. So that's one category. Number two, gluten, number three, dairy. If you did that, and you do the movements, and then you do the sleep, and you do the supplement. The good news is you will get a benefit. Like, and that's that's just you know and that's what I've seen clinically for the last you know you know two plus decades. If you did a cleanse, you'll take it all to the next level. And the beauty about the cleanse is that you'll be cleaning things out on on the inside through the liver, through the you know gallbladder, through the intestines. A lot of the other supplements you won't even need. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, the follow up to that is. Um, can you do the cleanse at any time? And then are you going to do the cleanse again that offers the Facebook support and the weekly calls like you had at the beginning of this year? So you can do the cleanse at any time. And I continue to get that question. So we were just talking about that the other day. I do believe we're going to do a shorter version. We'll do a 10 day sometime between now and beginning of summer, which is coming fast. So we'll, okay. everyone posted, we'll make sure everybody knows. So and that's, and that's, that seems like about the right, it's almost like a jump start um, that we'll do. So there's a very good chance to so just kind of pay, you know, pay attention. We'll most likely this, and you can do it on your own. Um, I know it's always a little more effective when you have the whole tribe, you know, and everyone kind of participating together. So just keep your eyes open, but there's, you can do it right now if you want. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. There's a couple of people. Yes. Let's do another group cleanse together. So um, yeah, that's uh that's awesome. Um, make sure that uh, you guys are, if you are interested in things like that, that come out where we do the group cleanse together, that you're on our email list. Uh, so you can just go to the healthmadesimple.shop 
healthmadesimple.com, sorry, healthmadesimple.com and register there. And then you'll be on our email list and make sure that you get all our updates and uh, you'll be the first to know when we do um, launch our group cleanses, etc. cetera. Um, next question is what's the best ways to prevent arthritis as we age? Yeah, so really just uh, and another great question because it is almost like this given that we're going to run into arthritis right? And it's usually considered something that you get as you get, as you get older. So uh, I, I love the question. I'm going to hit it right on the head here and say, continue to clean up your diet. If you put crap in, it's literally like feeding your car crap, like you're putting crap in it. It's going to wear the motor down. So we want to make sure that everything that goes in, I'm not just talking about your belly, but what gets pushed out into the joints, out into the muscles. So we got to get cleaner. And, and listen, every single year, you probably should be doing more work than you did the year before. We got to just continue to raise the bar and it's not punishment. It is not like you're being punished. You know, you know, it's not punishment not to have your ice cream every night and stuff like that. It's opportunity is really what it is. So if you want to avoid arthritis, again, it is, it's not genetic. Um, there are different types that have a, a gene in, you know, involved in it, but you know, the arthritis we're talking about every day, it's not genetic. So we're going to clean up the diet. You can get your body moving. Listen, there's, there's nothing about the human body that's supposed to be sitting in these chairs. Yeah. For you to get oh, some we so much don't we look i'm guilty I'm totally guilty yeah yeah 100 percent. all of us are even if you don't think you are you're still driving in your car sitting in your couch sitting in your dinner table we're sitting our butts on our sacrums and that fundamentally is not good it's it's it literally it inhibits the spinal movement so we aren't as flexible as movement now if we squat down or go into what we call melasana posture that's totally different we still have the, the sacrum itself still has ability to flux but when we have, um, but when we're sitting down, we, we lock down the spine. So you got to keep your body moving, get, get involved in some yoga, get your body clean. Turmeric. If I only give you one supplement, well, I have to give you two. Take a fish oil every day, cod liver oil and use turmeric every single day. Become a great facilitator of the inflammatory process. Eat a whole food diet, like eat from God's garden every day. If it comes from a root plant tree, walks in the garden, swims in the sea, eat it. All the other stuff is inhibiting you from uptaking those, those nutrients. And when you can't uptake them, your, 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 your joints wear down and that's your arthritic process. Yeah. Awesome. Um, good question here about, uh, you said that, um, carbohydrates cause earwax or, or contribute to earwax. Uh, if the only carbs I eat are vegetables, are they going to also cause earwax? No, it's not my experience. And I'm so glad they didn't ask me to explain why. Um, I don't I, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. it's been a clinical observation. Um, and, and I see it in a lot of little kids. Um, it's one of the things when I look at kids, you know, I don't do a lot of labs on kids and stuff like that. I try to look at everything, you know, head to toe, their eyes, their ears, their nose, their mouth, like, and I'm trying to get a feel for what's going on. And it's pretty, you know, it's, it's pretty predictable. So no, your carbohydrates with high fiber. Remember when you're eating your vegetables, you automatically, even though I know vegetables convert to, you know, it's a carbohydrate and yes, downstream, it converts to a sugar as well. Yet it, fiber is what detoxifies the human body. So every time you eat a vegetable, you are also, also giving your body an opportunity to detoxify. And that includes the infl inflammation going in your body. So um, keep eating your veggies, have out power at it. Awesome. Um, Okay. Next question is, do you have a favorite sleep tracker? How do you, how do you track your sleep? Yeah, I do. I, my favorite one is aura. I think they, I think they are hands down right now, the best technology. Yeah. Um, For sleep. I, yeah. You know, and they, I think I really, their technology to me, it's literally the best. Um, there's some other good ones out there. Um, like my watch I bought, um, but I don't really, I bought it because I thought it would be a really good sleep tracker, but it's not as accurate as aura. Um, it does other things better. Like, you know, if I run around the block, it keeps track of me and that kind of stuff. But Aura does an amazing job. It gives you a readiness score. It gives you heart rate variability. It does deep sleep and it does REM and it also does light sleep, which is important as well. And then it does no sleep and it don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's the Aura ring, right? For people that are not sure. You are a, um, um, yeah, they do great. Okay. Awesome. Um, uh, and another um, question, what is the carb app that you've used that you've mentioned in the past? Do you use a carb app to know how much, how many carbohydrates are in things? Yeah. And I love it. And uh, it's called carb manager. 
And again, I have no idea, like I have no affiliation in anything, but it's just a great, easy to use. And I'm sure there's some other good ones, but when it comes to those apps, I like it easy breezy and I, look, I put in a food and it's already there. So that one has been, they've done a really good job and it even gives you what we call the net carbs. And that's really what we're looking at because that's, um, that's, that's really what we want to know. How many net grams of carbs per day? It tells you if your food is like keto friendly and all that other stuff. So, and that's all I use it for is just counting carbs. And you know, usually what I recommend to people is do it for a couple of weeks, maybe, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks max. And, and I say that because if you're paying attention, you'll know at that point you see, cause you, you eat the same foods all the time, more or less. And you'll recognize your patterns and you'll know what it takes to stay under 50 grams a day, under 30 grams a day. And you know that when you have your sweet potato and a smoothie with a bunch of bananas in it and stuff like that, you know, you're going over a hundred. Um, so that that's, once you track it for about a month, usually you don't have to keep tracking it. Maybe it's good for you because you just like accountability, but carbmanager.com. Awesome. Um, cool. All right. Well, we, uh, thank you so much for every, all your questions, everybody. People had so many questions. We've, uh, we've, uh, started to run out of time. Um, if people want to dive a little bit deeper into, like we talked about God's garden and um, we talked about sleep, uh, some of those things we've done a whole episode on. So if you guys go back to your favorite podcast channel, Apple podcasts, Google play, Spotify, um, you can go back and search those episodes and you can hear us dive a little bit deeper into some of those topics for you. So now we're going to move into the last question. So for the ITISs, what is one action that uh, our listeners can take today to move them towards their goal of becoming superhuman? Well, I, I would say this, and I guess it's kind of an action. I would say this. If you've ever been given a label before, especially in the health world and by you know, a doctor or a practice or anything like that, an ITIS or any label for that matter, dive deeper so th this, this is the action i think it's really really important and i think a lot of the people like are listening to us tonight you know are, are into their health and are looking to move forward dive deeper don't accept the diagnosis don't definitely do not accept it as if it's something that you'll have for the rest of your life regardless of what it is look for the root cause and look for the strategy to improve it i just went through the itises tonight and i tell you what like if you share that out and spread it out because i literally i've been doing this for 24 years and i can't tell you karen how like hundreds, thousands of times, people just accept the diagnosis like plantar fasciitis. We didn't get to it. We just, they just accept things like tendonitis, bursitis, bronchitis, like over and over and over again. And they're garbage can diagnoses. And that's just some of, there's a lot of that, you know, garbage can diagnosis out there. So I would say go for that root cause. If you don't know, I you know, reach out to someone like myself or someone else is practicing functional health care, you know, literally looking for the root causes and how to make them better because we're on the same journey as well. The only reason I know half this stuff is because I had to deal with it myself. So, um, so with that being said, dive deeper, go for more. Don't settle for that diagnosis. Don't, don't let that label be attached to you. Let it go. Doesn't mean you, doesn't mean ignore it, but go after it and create a strategy to make your, you know, make the human body better. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much guys for tuning in again. We'll be back same time, uh, same place next week with another episode of the health made simple show. And as usual, thank you guys, everyone for being here. Appreciate you guys on Facebook here and on zoom and keep doing the thing, keep sharing it out, keep spreading love. And then of course, always we're going to take deliberate action for our mind, our body, our overall wellness. Y'all be awesome.